everybody. Tammy Trier, TrierWilderness.com. Three's a charm. Uh, the enemy is fighting me this morning. It took me a while to get on here, but I am here. I will be very honest. I am sleep deprived greatly, and I am disheveled this morning. And again, I believe that's the, enemy, the result of the enemy, but I am pushing on, and I'm going to show you some things around here that are new and share some exciting celebrations with you guys. Good morning, Craig. Good morning, Tammy. So bear with me because uh, I, I am definitely off kilter this morning. Good morning, Chad. So lots of really good stuff going on here, but we have been heavily, heavily under attack. Um, and I've got some funny stories to share with you. And I think, honestly, all of us that are speaking his word and are going bold to the throne are under attack. So it's just going to be how it is. So we just need to learn to fight back. And that's what we are doing. And also just laughing at him as he's attacking, right? So good morning, Shelly. Good morning, Diana. I am glad you can join me, Shelly. That's awesome. All of you, I'm just so glad you're with today. Behind me here, you can see that we've got the range hood in place. Underneath the range hood, we are going to have stone, and above the range hood is going to be a wooden, um, well-varnished piece that will go up and have a flat that will enable whoever is going to take over to put their basket or their old crock or something unique up there to just add decorations. The mountain man was going for the woman, woman's heart with uh, the ability to place things on flat surfaces. So Kelly says, "Morning, Tammy." You do look tired. I am whooped, and the enemy just started shoving a really wicked headache at the top of my head when I right before I started. But thank you for your prayers. She said we've been praying for you both. We appreciate it because we really need it, and I appreciate that. And good morning to you. Diana says good morning to you. Attack happening here too. I'm telling you, um, it is. It is just so. I'm just watching, and I'm seeing him making his rounds and part of today's topic is going to cover is part of that um my my girlfriend starry had shared some really awesome stuff with me and then she put a video out on it so i'm watching her video and it's kind of neat because i knew what was coming i knew what she was going to share and as she's trying to record this video she went through three battery failures she's sitting in the middle of this beautiful place with the sun shining and it just started dumping rain on her. I mean, white rain. It came out of nowhere. I mean, you can't tell me that's not the enemy. She had an incredible story to share. And of course, he's just going to try to rock her world. And he's probably going to do the same today. So if I get lost and I, and I fall off of this video, I am coming back. Uh, good morning, Miss Courtney. Good to see you this morning. Now, I have some other fun stuff to share with you here on our home, and then we are going to defeat the enemy together, and I am so glad because that just shows me how God is working with today's topic as well, and you will see as we move forward. By the way, this is going to sound funny, but what did you have for breakfast this morning? I was blessed with farm fresh eggs or homestead fresh eggs, asparagus, and bacon. So... I started my day off great, along with a really good cup of coffee and God's Word. So I am already filled. But I'm going to spin this. Wait till you see. Of course, we've got junk everywhere yet, so it's with me. All right. Dun, da, da. This week, it's going to be little stuff because it's getting down to the nitty-gritty where it is time-consuming things that are being done. But the railing caps are in place. Now, these babies here are going to be a really dark, dark stain. Um, somewhat to match the flooring here, but even a little bit darker. And I believe that with that dark hand railing, for one, it'll eliminate hand marks on it because you just have that. Look at the top of this post just from people resting their hands on it. You got grease on your hands, just natural greases, natural oils. So that's naturally going to transfer. So we are going to stain it with a dark stain. And I believe that that is going to make all of this edging of the wood, you know, where you can see, oh, sorry, nothing like my arm, where you can see the dark and then you've got all these knots and the natural characteristics of the wood. This dark is going to make all that pop. So he's got the handrail on the cap on all the way up to the top and some of you may have seen this on Instagram 
I'm so proud of what he is able to do. And the big question is, did he do that artwork? No, not this time around because of our uh, time constraints, but that is something that he is going to be doing in the near future. So it just looks absolutely amazing and is coming along. And he is, let me get out of your way. Oh, good, you're not. Okay, let me get out of the way. I'm maneuvering. He, oh, I'll spin. Oh, I spun again. Try it again. Blondie's at the wheel. Hey, everybody. He's working on the door for the bathroom, and I will come out and show that process in a minute. Um, oh, I love it. So, Kelly had almond milk smoothie with banana, fresh pineapple, and coconut. Awesome, awesome. And Tammy had coffee. That's always good, too. <laughs> I, I need that first thing in the morning. And we worked physically hard yesterday, so we slept in no breakfast today, had an early lunch. Nice. That's good, too, because you got rest. Egg and cheese sandwich on wheat bread with a side of scrap. Oh, some scrapple. Have me a piece of scrapple, Craig. This done really thin, nice and crispy, and some apple butter, please. And Shelly had, I'm going to spin this. Um, Shelly had a couple of green teas that later had a smoothie with lots of veggies and some pumpkin seeds nice all healthy stuff oh chad sorry i'll tell him that when we get outside i know he'll say that back to you um we've been out planning this morning nice i'm living vicariously through you because tonight we're going to cover the garden i have teas coming up in the garden but everything's getting black plastic because right now i'll show you outside we <laughs> We're stressed by our insides and trying to get all of this finished. And then you look outside and with the sun and the bits of rain we've been getting, it's becoming a jungle outside. So later today, that's our hope to get out there. But I want to show you something quick here. This is my other celebration. I showed you, ah, I showed you this room. Hello, Brian. No, you didn't miss everything. We just started really, and it's probably going to be a long one today. Yeah, I think we got it too, Craig. It's just oh, it's just a process. It's a process, and when the enemy's attacking, it just makes it harder. This is the Mountain Boy's room. If you recall, there was a bed there, and it was heap sky high. I had the privilege and honor to bless a local family on Sunday. They lost their home. And um, Before I go into that, I'm just going to show you something, then I'll spin the camera around. That empty space there is going to sadly get filled very quickly with all of that and all of these totes that you see in different locations. I mean, that's my kitchen basically in totes. So that stuff is going to go in that bedroom and then I can sort it. So I will be really, really excited about that. That space gives me a place to sort things. And then once they're sorted, they go out in the shed. And then in here next week when we record, it will be... Uh, I guess I want to say magazine ready because they're going to do all kinds of staging and everything to get this listed. So it'll look really nice and I'm real excited about that. I don't do well with clutter, so it's been a long time. But you know what? When you're going through this building process, you've got to put blinders on. you just got to deal. I mean, I'll show you. Let me just show you. See all that? It's sawdust. It's everywhere. It's in everything. But you know what? It's part of the process. And you know what? You just learn to go with it. Now, I was saying how I got to bless a uh, local family. They lost their home. They were renting it, and it burned to the ground, thankfully, and by the grace of God, while they were not home. Um, but they lost everything. And I had reached out to her a while back, and I said that I was putting things together that I no longer wanted. And I had mentioned to you guys that I'm done selling. At this point, I'm going to gift. And there was a reason for it because I really felt God putting it on my heart to be able to bless them. So they took the single bed. Um, they have three children, fourth on the way in a month. And uh, um, I'm going to share something after this as well. If you feel um, it on your heart to lend a hand with them, either financially or you have uh, you know, a gift card or anything, this family is an amazing Christian family. And we ended up spending the day from like 2 to like 10 o'clock on Sunday, just getting to know them. Um, but really good Christian people, very like-minded, and we just had a really enjoyable, enjoyable time. And so not only did we bless them, they blessed us. And that's how it works. And that's what we're going to step into in a little bit here. And you know what? I just realized I did not. Let me invite 
two people on this journey here today and also um, share with me some of the opportunities you've had to either bless somebody or be blessed recently. Um, those are good things to share. Our testimonies are good things to share. Our stories, you know, we've got to be willing to step out and be able to... Oops. Sorry, guys. I just want to invite them because they have a hard time locating the live feed. Here we go. So while I've got my head to the side and talking away from you, share with me some of the ways... You've been blessed or have blessed others recently because it's really, really important that we make an effort to do that as a Christian. Well, guys, boy, I am not able to share or, or reach out to them. See how the enemy's working today? I'm telling you, he's going to keep, he's going to keep things difficult today, and that's okay. We're going to fight him, and we're going to fight him together. So I'm going down. Okay, he let the critters in. Mrs., I don't know, you were left in for a reason, so I'll see if I can let you back out. Just stay there. There she is, guarding the stairs. <laughs> okay, bear with me here. I've got a charger on the phone because that was dying, and I've got my iPad in my other hand because I want to do the rest of this outside. But let me show you what the mountain man is working on going to get bright out here. It is beautiful. But you'll see too our junk behind him it is like a mass over there is a massive jungle of grass starting to form. Okay. You want to tell him a little bit about what you're doing? Open the door. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, making a door. <laughs> and he's going to work on hinges. <laughs> By the way, um, Chad said hello, brother, as you walked out, and I didn't see the message. Hey, man. How you doing? <laughs> so the enemy's not just attacking us. He's attacking everybody around us, too. They're all getting it. So perfect, perfect message today. Just got to try and just keep praying and for each other and pressing on, you yep. know? Things don't always go real good, and a lot of times when they do go good, it's not long something comes up. So, but you gotta just keep on praising God and pushing forward. And <laughs> when you're getting beat down, you know it's. I guess Tammy says this a lot, but that's a good. I guess a good sign in some ways. <laughs> Uh -huh. You know, you're doing something right, because otherwise the devil will just leave you alone. So. Yep. Yep, we'd have it easy like a lot of the non-Christians who we who we end up be wondering why things are so easy for them. That's because they're not, on, they're not pushing on and pulling into God and speaking his word and a threat to him in any way. So we will show you more on the door. Hello, Janet. All right. I'm going to go down in the yard and see if I can stretch uh, it out. You'll see, I'm sure, you'll see the hinges that I'm going to I'm gonna make strap hinges on the forge um, like I did on one of my other doors, well, a couple of my other doors, but uh, you'll, I'm sure you guys will see that later, so have a good one. <laughs> all right, you can see all of my dandelions, all of them, that's, a, that's my flower bed. <laughs> Oh, and some of them have already gone to seed, and we've got lots of tall, tall grass. So, work on one thing, and the other goes to crap in a handbasket. But you know what? It's all going to get done, and this will be some really good exercise for me this afternoon and evening. So, I'm not going to complain about that, because I do actually like to mow grass. Okay, here we go. So, I'm going to take us down here. I was hoping it would still remain in the shade, but I don't think it's going to be shady. And hopefully, the connection is still good. If I start breaking up, you need to tell me and I'll head back inside. I just thought I would take advantage of this beautiful day. It is supposed to rain here today. So, we'll see what happens. I know you guys have left a couple messages on the and get situated here. Bear with me a second. Sure, I'm not sitting in a big pile of tree sap because that happens out here. <laughs> All right, let me get this tripod set up. Sorry, you get to see the top of my head for a little bit. The beautiful
beauty of moving things around. All right. Ah, there we go. Yeah, Mrs. Copper is not going to be happy that she's in. I got some legs long, some legs short. Sorry. There we go. We'll make it work. Okay, there we go. Up oh, is spinning. Okay, I think I'm back and I think I'm at. Okay, good. All right. Good, good, good. I'm back. I'm back. All right. So let's see here. We'll go back a little bit here. Kelly says, I've been sharing perennial flowers with neighbors. Oh, I love that. I've had a hard time growing beautiful flowers out here. I love having flowers, um, but because of our clay and our soil and the acidity of, from all the pines, I have a hard time um, keeping my flowers going, but I have some that are pretty hardy that are going, but I would I would be I would be taking you up on that if I was your neighbor. Diana says I try to keep new water bottles in the van. There are several tent cities near our local Walmart. We give them away when we see any of the residents out and about. That's so awesome. That is so awesome. We did an apple run one time up to Spokane, Washington up there. I think it's off of Division Street. They used to have um, a spot where the um, same same thing. And uh, we wanted to be able to bless them. I would have loved to have taken a hot meal, but it just wasn't in our budget or something we were able to do. Um, but to be able to just give them something. So we took bags and bags of apples and it was pretty awesome. Good morning, my friend. Right back at you, Terry. Hope you have a beautiful day up in the mountains. We will certainly do that. We are going to make it a point to do that. Love dandelions most dis most dislike them. I know. I love them too. Um, we eat them. We forage them. And they're, I make jelly. Uh, we make tinctures. We make salves. We make all kinds of stuff. Uh-oh. Am I still gone or am I, am I, are you able to have to let me know? Give me some thumbs up, some hearts if you can hear me and see me right now. Um, because he's going to fight today. He's going to really, really fight what I have to say today. So let me know. Um, if I have to, I'll run back inside. It'll, I can run fast. That was the highlight for this week. Um, we dropped off some things at that family's home on Monday morning when we ran to town to do errands. And I ran for the first time. Okay, awesome. I ran for the first time in three years. And what was really awesome about it is it felt good and I didn't have any struggles. I wasn't heavy breathing. My chest didn't get tight. Um, their little girl uh, likes to run and she wanted me to run with her. So that was absolutely fantastic. So, um, you know, it's a little celebration. So we got to hang on tight to those little celebrations, guys. And when the enemy is attacking, you really need to realize what it is. And like my girlfriend Starry did, um, she just started busting up when it started raining on her. And that's what I've been doing too. I am, I'm just like, you know what? Go away. I see what you're doing. I see your antics. And when you learn that and you can see that, um, it's pretty amazing. And you know, the enemy was really attacking me last night when I was awake. Um, I couldn't sleep. I, my body's not shutting down right. I think it's just everything that's going on, the stress, and I don't know. But I haven't been able to sleep really good for the last three nights. And the last night, the enemy was just oh, pounding on me. Um, something had happened earlier in the week. Um, it was a little hurtful. And um, I was trying to disengage from it. And he kept just slamming it into my head. And I woke up, and I was felt good finally gotten some sleep, woke up, and he's slamming it back in my head. And you know what? I went out and I did my devotions and I spent time with God and he fed me in such a huge way. One of the big things that he shared with me was John 14, 27. I give you peace, the kind of peace only I can give. 
And you know, there is so much truth in that. When we realize that we're under attack, when we realize that he's using people, whether close to us, away from us, whatever, to hurt us, um, you start to realize how desperate he is. And you realize that there's no sense reacting because it's not, it's not necessarily their fault and they may not even know that they're doing it. Good morning, Nikki. And um, it is, it's real eye-opening when you realize what's, what's happening. And what's most important is that you learn to disengage from it. And you seek Him. All night when I couldn't sleep, I just kept giving it to God. Take it away. Just take it away. You know, I don't have time for that kind of stuff in my head. I don't have time to be in a foul or sour place. I don't want to be. That is not my nature. So it was really, it's really hard when that sets in. But when you know what it is and you just pull into God, there's nothing he can do. So remember that and focus on that. Now I want to share something else that happened. This was pretty pretty unique and um, what was neat is that the mountain man got to experience the whole thing with me and this was last Saturday um, my my mother-in-law reached out to me and s lifted me she sent a video and she said that this video reminded her of me she's a precious woman she she is the mother I, I, I never had growing up and uh, she's just a precious precious person and very, very dominant in my life. And um, when she sent the video, I got it first thing in the morning before I even got out of bed. It came across the screen, and because it was her, I looked at it. I try not to look at my machine for an hour after I wake up. But I, I we watched it, and I cried because um, I was very touching, and 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 really meant a lot to me that she felt that way about me. And not like two hours later, another dear friend of mine tagged me on something on Facebook that was the same message and expressed how, um, how, how neat it is to see how strong of a woman I am. And, and I, I, we're all, you know, we don't always see what other people see. And sometimes we need to. And that's what the mountain man said to me. You know, maybe you need to see yourself the way they see yourself, what they see you. And then... Uh, another hour later somebody that follows us on Instagram shared the same message and in my mind this is kind of weird but but it also proves the whole the whole theory of what transpired you know how sometimes you need to hear that you need to be lifted you need to, to know that you're doing the right thing and other times you know you know you're doing the right thing you, you you're really strong and your footing is firm I was firm and I just thought in my mind, you know, it's funny that they're all sharing this with me. You know, not that I didn't appreciate it and not that it, it, it didn't help, but that it just was, you know, I felt, I felt firm in my place. So, you know, usually God shares those things when I'm, when, I, when I'm low. Well, how interesting it was. Monday morning came and I started getting pummeled by the enemy. I mean, it was just insane. We were under attack big time on our channel, on our commenting. Last Wednesday, you guys might have caught that one before I got rid of it. Um, we were just under heavy attack and he was using all kinds of different things to attack us. And we were already tired. We were already worn out. And then to have those attacks come in, it can really make you weary. It can really wear you down. But God built me up on purpose so that when that attack came and I'm so intuitive anymore before in my life I would be under attack and had no clue didn't even realize what spiritual attacks were but now I'm so in tune and I so expect it because of my boldness to the throne I'm not gonna keep my mouth quiet I'm not afraid to speak Christ's name Jesus name God's name in any company that I am with I used to be very cautious I used to you know really cautiously speak that because I didn't probably didn't want to look odd didn't want to offend but you know what I don't mean to offend I mean to to um, share with you the incredible things that I have as a result of my walk with Christ so that was pretty awesome it was really awesome and what was really cool is he saw it he saw the entire thing transpire I even shared with him that it's really odd that God is God is building me right now because I feel firm uh, you know wonder wonder what it's all about 
So, you know, God always knows. God is all-knowing. And He will build you when you need build up. He will protect you when you need protected. Just remember, we need to call on Him, guys. We need to call on Him. So, how awesome is that? Some praises to God on that one. Um, the other thing that is really awesome that I would like to share with you, and I will try to do this without... Good morning, Krista. Um, without getting all mushy on you, but this just totally touched me. Two things. We were praying yesterday and fasting for Martin. We've talked about Martin. He's been on our prayer list for a long time. Um, he is the one that had a heart attack while jogging with his daughter and has been in a coma ever since. Um, is pretty much a miracle even though he is still in the coma in, in that he is reacting to stimuli and um, it is just really, really awesome. So yesterday and, and I believe that he is where he is because of his own faith his family's faith they come to visit him and although we had lots of people all over the country praying for him yesterday um, you know Kim reported last night there was no miracle but what a blessing that the kids just felt such peace that they were able to laugh and feel comfortable and that she had such peace and she you know, she knows her miracle is coming, which is just fabulous. And the fact that they were all within, in his room. Good morning. I hope that you are um, going to have nice things to say and not be one of our trolls this week. Um, excuse me, guys. Um, anyway. Uh, you see? He's trying. He's trying to break me today. But anyway, they were in his room and they were so lifted and so in good spirits. You know, that feeds. That feeds through. I truly believe that when Martin is removed from this coma, he is going to be 100% healed. The laughter of his children, the love of his wife, the constant and unbelievable faith that this family has. So wait till you hear, I know, how about it, Kelly? Praise the Lord. Wait till you hear though. Wait till you hear this. It just, it, oh, it's a fabulous story. And I saw you put, said something else. Kelly says, went through attacks for decades and didn't understand it. Now I see the attacks for what they are. What a blessing that God was blessing and building you up. I know, I know. I, it just, and you know, guys, that's another blessing to our journals. And you know, it's just a blessing to our journals that we are writing in our journals and we are documenting this amazing, amazing stuff. I know, I know. So listen to this. Okay. All right. Have a great day. Find another place to be. I am blocking you. Okay. Sorry, guys. Good morning, Deborah. I'm so glad you're joining. You're coming in at a really good spot, and I'm going to try to keep it together here. This is Martin's wife. She posted this last week on her personal page, and I asked her for permission to share it because it is incredibly powerful. She says, I hear it over and over how strong people think I am. They ask how I walk this walk with faith intact and don't crumble under the weight of it. Let me tell you a story. This is where I'm going to have a problem. You see, when I was 10... My dad was in an accident at work that left him with a severe brain injury. He had an open skull fracture, severed optic nerve, his ear, good, hey, he misses, woo, sorry, sorry, <laughs> hi, <laughs> I told you, all right, um, he had a severed optic nerve, his ear was nearly completely cut off, etc. His prognosis was like Martin's, very grim. I keep breathing heavy so I don't lose it on this. I had the privilege of watching my mom walk through this uncharted waters with an unshakable faith and trust in the Almighty God. She was the picture of strength and grace in the middle of hard. She prayed hard, trusted God, and never stopped to set up camp in the hell she was walking through. She kept going until she saw her miracle. Listen to this. My dad is our daily reminder that miracles do happen. He and my mom have been here with my family, taking care of us, doing not-so-fun farm chores and reminding us that our miracle is coming. <laughs> is that not awesome? God knew what my, what my future would hold. In his great mercy, he left my experience a journey. He let 
Let me experience a journey with a mom that molded the faith and strength that would forever change and mold my understanding of who he is and what he is capable of. My mom has walked her faith out every day in every way and has, by her example, imparted that strength of faith to us. And she says, Happy Mother's Day to the best mom ever. Her consistent convictions of faith are the building blocks that laid the foundation that allows me to stand in the unknown, firm in the unknown. Now, that is incredibly powerful, and I want to wish you ladies all a happy Mother's Day. Um, I thought of you all day Sunday, and we were fellowshipping with that family, and I did not get a sh chance to share anything, and I was going to share something Monday, and I was fellowshipping with that family and running errands that day as well. So I just want to wish you all and just know that you play such a huge role in the children you are raising and the people you are around and just know that I thought of you all day and, and that I love you all. Now I want to see if I can find um, what I shared with her because that was important too. Um, and, and maybe some of you may be in this situation and I want you to realize I want you to realize how how you may be playing a role in this too. How about it, Shelly? Wow. Thank you, my dear friend, Krista. Good morning, Charles. What a testimony touched my heart. I know. Yes, it's just, it's so incredible. So now, I, this is what I said to her. I said, a gift was given to you at an early age that would be needed for your life ahead. But understand that every person that says how strong you are and asks you how you are walking in such deep faith has just received that beautiful gift paid forward, sweet friend. God surely has purpose in everything always, and sometimes through these hard journeys we walk out ourselves, we never realize how many people we touch as a result. So you've got to remember that. And, and you know, it's just like with my mother-in-law and those people sharing those things with me, you know, we don't hold ourselves at the same level other people do. I told you, sometimes we are our worst enemies. Um, but realize that when you're walking things out, you are a light and you don't realize the light that you are. And, and I said that, you know, what a beautiful story and what beautiful people. Your miracle is coming. I said yesterday in my live video that you keep visiting Martin, you and the children, the murmur of children, the presence of love and laughter. Your deep faith is speaking and showing life and miracles to those that care for him and miracles to those that care for him are allowing him to heal, heal, heal while in that coma. Your miracle is coming and we have so many people praying for you all. You know, but how awesome, how awesome. And think of it this way. Look how God prepared her already at the age of 10. At 10, she saw what she was going to experience now in her life. And then that continuing walk from 10 on, she got to see the strength of her mother that never, ever faltered. And, and, and the beauty of her father's recovery and his miracle. You know, we got to realize that the things that happen in our lives have purpose. And, and they have impact. And we need to open our eyes. That is just so important. So let me go back here. Oh man, I'm praising God with that. That's just so, so huge. It just, oh, it touched my heart and it definitely made me cry. Um, I couldn't read that to the mountain man without like totally weeping. So here's the next thing. God gives us friends to help us face life's battles. How many of you believe that? I totally believe that. You guys are a walking testament to that in our lives right now. God has blessed us with you guys and, and it is so powerful and so meaningful because what's really crazy is he stripped us of a lot of people in our immediate surroundings. Um, people that didn't understand our walk, people that didn't understand our situation, people you know that are inflicted by the enemy. So when he takes away, you've gotta always believe that he's going to replace. And I feel so incredibly nurtured and blessed by all of you. So thank you. Because this walk has been, this journey has been hard. It's been very, very hard. Uh, January, February, and March, we felt very alone because we were following God's word and many didn't understand, you know, God's leading, God's direction for us that um, for many of this world would shake their heads and wonder what in the world we are doing and why. But, you know, you have seen how he has blessed us for that. And it is just quite, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. So I'm glad you guys are walking this out with us. So now, 
I read this on May 9th and I knew that this was something that I had to share. The best strategy for life. Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. That is Ecclesiastes 4.12. And if you go back and read Ecclesiastes 4, 1 through 12, um, I, I would really encourage it. It's very powerful and it's very important for you to read. But the story is really awesome too. As we watched my daughter's basketball game from the bleachers, I heard the coach utter a single word to the girls on the court. Doubles. Immediately, their defensive strategy shifted from one on one to two of their players teaming against their tallest ball holding opponent. There were, they were successful in thwarting her efforts to shoot and score, eventually taking the ball down the court to their own basket. When Solomon, the writer of Ecclesiastes, grapples with the toils and frustrations of the world, he too acknowledges that having a companion in our labors yields a good return. While a person battling alone may be overpowered, Two can defend themselves. A friend nearby can help us up when we fall down. Solomon's words encourage us to share our journey with others so we don't face the trials of life alone. For some of us, that requires a level of vulnerability we're unfamiliar or uncomfortable with. Others of us crave that kind of intimacy and struggle to find friends with whom to share it. Whatever the case, we mustn't give up in the effort. Solomon and basketball coaches agree. Having teammates around us in the best strategy, is the best strategy for facing the struggles that loom large on the court and in life. Lord, thank you for the people you put in our lives to encourage and support us. Amen. Amen. You guys have no idea how much you have kept us up, have kept us moving forward. Your prayers are huge. But this Wednesday um, community that we are forming is just unbelievable. And I walk away from this every Wednesday just so full of life, so full of God, so blessed by you all. So remember that. And if you don't have friends in your local area that you feel that you can confide in and share that your stuff with, you always have us. I've told you before, you can reach out and personal message me. You can email me. Um, you're welcome to share here. Uh, the community that we have here is just such a strong community of believers and the enemy has no stronghold. And that is just, I'm just, I'm just so blessed by it all. And I see God's purpose in everything that we are doing in every step of the way. Even when we're tired, um, just knowing that God is our strength and focusing on that is such an incredible stronghold. And, you know, as you walk through life and as you learn this, like Kelly said, you know, she went through attacks for a long time. So did I. Good grief. Uh, a good portion of my life until I understood it. And that's why I'm sharing it so wholeheartedly because I don't want you to go through life. If you are younger than I am, I don't want you to go through life experiencing things the way I did when you can be above it and be bigger than it, be the warrior, be stronger than it, and know it, see it for what it is. That is just the biggest thing is just seeing these attacks for what they are. And and what's really awesome is I shared with you last week that I, you know, I had pains in my legs since September. When I get pains now, I know that it's a phantom pain. I tell my body it's a phantom pain. I tell my, my, you know, tell my brain it's not my body, it is my brain. And that pain goes away. And you know what? With our love for Christ and what God has given us, we have the ability to do the same thing to the enemy and tell him to go pound sand and he has no choice but to leave. So, it's pretty impressive and it's pretty amazing and God has given us the tools, he has given us his word and he has given us each other to fight this battle together. Many of you said in the beginning of this that you needed this today because you are having the same struggle that the enemy is attacking and, and you know what? You could have the best relationship with your spouse ever and he will still use each of you to fight the other. And he will, he will do it in such sneaky and nasty ways. And, and you know what? When you start to see it for what it is and, and you realize what it is right off the bat, you know, you can rekindle your relationship and move on. And you are so much now stronger than you were before. And he is losing his grip 
more and more. And that's what we need to do as a community, as, a, as a marriages, as couples, as um, in teaching our children this, and being able to share this with our community. And, and just, you know, the more, I, when I picture community in this regard, I picture us all, at, you know, have our arms wrapped around each other and we're connected at the elbows and he just can't get in. He can't get in. He has, there's no room for him here. And I love it. I absolutely love it. So the prayer from that is God give us friends to help us face life's battles. And I think that in a personal walk for each of us, that God is going to give you the people you need. He has already given me the people I need um, and continues to do so. You guys are so amazing in, I just love it. I know that God divinely implanted each and every one of you in my life. Look at you. She's my protector. The enemy can't get me with her around either. She's awesome. All right, so this is kind of funny. Um, I, when, I, when I printed out what Kim had wrote, one of my other friends on Facebook had written, I am on that portion of the trail that has quite a few ups and downs in it. And his testimony um, is really quite crazy too. Um, and I would just like to ask that you pray for Shannon and Angela. And I would ask, like to ask that you pray for Heather and Justin. They are the family that we blessed. And I will share, they have a GoFundMe account that they've started. And... Um, I'm going to try to do something locally here for them as well um, with her expecting in a month. Um, I don't know what things she had prior before the fire um, for the baby, but um, you know, it's, it, it's hard going through loss. It's hard going through um, tragedy and um, they're both uh, walking it out very closely with God, but um, it certainly has been um, a real blessing for them to have Christian people coming to them and, and really uh, pulling into them. And I think that we as a community can even do more. So I am going to share that GoFundMe later. Again, their name is Justin and Heather. And for privacy reasons, I'm not going to share the children's names. Um, but they're young and, and they're really, um, really good kids. So um, if you guys uh, feel um, the Holy Spirit you know, pressing in on you with this family. Um, I greatly appreciate it. Um, if you are in a situation like we are right now, you know, your time will come to be able to bless somebody. So there is a mosquito after me. They find me. I want to share something else on these lines. Um, my girlfriend shared, we are hardwired for love. We're hardwired for belonging. It's in our DNA. True belonging doesn't require you to change who you are. It requires you to be who you are, and that's vulnerable. Bren Brown shares that in The Call to Courage, which she said you can find on Netflix. It is a documentary, and um, I love Bren. I think it's Bren or is it Brene Brown? I don't remember. Um, like I told you earlier, I am disheveled today, but she is, it's B-R-E-N-E -E Brown. She is phenomenal. Her, she's very encouraging, and I have to imagine that her documentary is also very good. But is that not a truth, that we need to feel like we belong to something, we need to feel love, we need to feel nurtured? And remember that if you're not getting that from people, God will give you that. Just pause and take time and talk to Him. Um, you know, there are, he, God directs me to words in the Bible all the time and um, when you spend time with him the more time you spend with him the more direction he gives so understand that he will fill you up when you take time with him and I encourage I encourage that oh you guys have been speaking a lot here and I didn't realize it I had the screen down um, thank you Charles for the happy Mother's Day Believe that about friends, Shelley said. And amen, amen, Diana says. He has removed people from our lives as well. It's great to have friends who love us and stand by us no matter what. I'll tell you what, that is a true, true friendship. And you know, as you walk through life, you, you see who your true friends are. It may only be five people. It may be two hands full. But it's not going to be a lot. And you know what? The ones that walk away, the ones that are bitter and angry and 
even vulgar, you know, and ignorant people, because you're going to have that. Um, you're going to have ignorant and, and, and just vulgar people enter your life that, that have nothing to offer. And you know what? It's okay that they leave. Um, I have been blessed that several people have left my life. And um, I never thought I would say that, but it, it enabled me to heal. Um, it enabled uh, me to receive such great growth. And I realized God's purpose in it. But do do one thing for yourself. And that is forgive them and pray for them. I pray for those people every day still, and it's been a long time. But I pray for them because they need God's love. And as awful as they were, as hurtful as they were to me, um, I have forgiven them and I have love in my heart for them. I don't want to be around them. I don't, I don't need their poison. But I do pray for them to find God because that is one clear thing that they do need. And I'm sure that many of you can relate to that. Kelly says, often wishing we were physically closer, we'd be there to help you. Oh, I so appreciate that. And Tammy offered the same yesterday. Many of you have. Many, many of you have. And you know what? Your prayers are so powerful for us. We feel them. We know that your prayers are what is keeping us going, keeping us laughing. Last week and this week have been the two hardest weeks, I think, of the year. Um, in just knowing that we've, we are we have this deadline and we've got to get it done and there's so much still to be done and as we're finishing up the inside the outside is starting to look like a wilderness playground again like when we first moved here so you know those prayers God has purpose in in our locations God has purpose in providing people that are our biggest and more steadfast prayer warriors so just know that your prayers are appreciated and they are so valuable and they are helping so thank you so much and Kelly said, absolutely, amen, amen, from uh, Shelly, and Charles said, Emmanuel, God with us, absolutely, and Diana said, we'd be there along with, <laughs> with you, Kelly, <laughs> and Tammy says, we would be too. I love you guys so much, and Charles says, I feel blessed being part of this group. Awesome. That makes my heart sing, and like I told you, you know, I might be the one initiating these events, but you, we, it's a whole, it's not just me. And God is working in my family, but I know that through us, he's working in your family. And I know also because of us building this community, he is fighting us all. He is, I see it. I see it. And when you guys reach out to me and share what's going on in your worlds, um, how much he is attacking us. And my girlfriend and I talk about this all the time how much it's going to continue and how much he is going to just continue to fight us that are bold enough to speak up. And, and you know what, like he's like the mountain man said earlier, I, I don't look for new struggles, but when they come, I, I look at them with gratitude, knowing that he has a purpose in it, knowing that because um, I am as bold as I am, and I am fighting forward that he is going to continue to try to stop me. And I am, I hate to use the word, but hell-bent on proving him wrong and fighting him. Um, he can go back where he belongs. He has no place on my property, in my home, in my family, in my people, on this planet. He needs to go. And we have the ability, trust me, I could tell you some of our experiences, and maybe at some point we will get into that. Um, but we have the ability to tell him to go and you can visibly see him going. So keep that in mind. Kelly says, I've drawn strength from this group and what we study and discuss. Oh, that's so awesome. And Terry says, reaching out to you is so true. You've been there for me and my wife with prayers and support. Lifting me up and encouraging me to not give up on God and my, mar and my wife and my marriage. God bless you, my friend. God bless you too. <laughs> you know what? That's what we're called to do. And you know what? Those messages and those emails that come across my screen, I feel are the divine breaks I need from my chaos, and it makes me feel really good. Um, it warms my heart, and I know God is speaking for me when I respond to you guys, so I don't take the credit for that. I give that to Him, but that's why I tell you to reach out to me. You know, it goes both ways. Um, Part of my, you know how I told you guys in the beginning, I use that coach me and I am, or coach dot me, and I am using that to create new habits and I'm doing my journaling this year and have not missed a day. It's an addiction now. But two things I have in there every day also are 
bless someone and blessed by someone because I, I realize that every day I am being blessed by somebody and it's just really neat to acknowledge that and to keep it in the forefront. It's basically my way of tracking that level of gratitude. I mean, it's in my journal, it's written in my journal, but just remember, you know, no matter what mud puddle, you tell him, go get him, go get him, go get him. She saw movement up at the house. <laughs> go get him. I'll spin this around. I don't know if you can see him. He's teasing her. Go get him. Go. Go get him. I'm okay. Go get him. Go. Go get him. Don't let him do that. Go get him. Go. Go get him. She's like greedy. She gets... She's got the waggy tail, but when there's something that's not right, that tail is not wagging. <laughs> Forever. So I'm going to spin this back around because I know I'm keeping you guys on long today. <laughs> oh, she's, I'll tell you what, she is my protector. I trust her instincts all the time. Shelly says this group has been a blessing. Oh gosh, you guys are just filling me. I love it and there's probably purpose in it because like I said, he's attacking and I love you all so greatly. Oh, Miss Connie, I am so glad to see you on here. Thank you, belated happy Mother's Day to you, my friend. And she says, I hope you and your loved ones are well at this time. I wish I was closer to give you big hugs and let you know how much you are loved. Oh, right back at you, sister. Right back at you. You are in my prayers every day. Charles says, God is, God is in us, around us, through us, and for us. Absolutely. Oh, Don, thank you. Don says, keep on going. Deborah says, we need good God now more than ever. Uh, amen. I mean, you look around this world and it's just nothing but destruction between what's on, on the TV, what's going on around us. I mean, there's just, it's just trash. And we, you know, that all can be changed. We have to make a daily point to try to change the way this world is and you know it's just one day at a time one step at a time one action at a time Diana says rejoice in your various trials it means you're doing what is right I know I so believe that I so so believe that I don't know when and where I heard that but I'll tell you what for years I have been celebrating that when I was on the farm before moving out here before meeting the mountain man I was in a really bad place I had left an abusive marriage and um, I believe that is where that those sentiments came from um, because uh, he, he strengthens me through every trial I've been through and teaches me so much. Um, Kelly says, truly, truly, we should look at it as good thing that the evil, that evil feels so threatened by our walk with God. In the name of Jesus, we have the power. Oh, so do we have the power. Krista Jo says, tell the mountain man I said hello and send my love to all of you. We love you, girl, and I'm really glad you joined me. And thank you, all of you, all of you. That is just so, so powerful. And it's a testament to what we believe and, and how we live our lives. And you know, guys, I want to walk with integrity. I want to walk with God shining through. I love the way Todd White always says it, that when, he gets, when a Christian gets squeezed, God should come out. And I want to share this with you because with that being said, oh, I didn't even have that planned, but when you hear what I read, you will see how God is speaking through me. Oh, gosh, it's so amazing. Okay. Oh, responding to accusations. This is the enemy. This is, this, this is what I read this morning, and this is part of what lifted me up. I read three different things, all correlated, all fed me, and this goes right along with what we're talking about with the enemy. And, and also, um, the topic of today was the best strategies for life. So, you know, being in life and having friends that support us and lift us, that are godly, that, um, you know, seek God first, you know, this is, that is powerful. And we are powerful as a unit, as a team, when we are living life that way. Now, this is the next level of that. And this is at a personal level of what we need to remember and what we need to walk out. I want you to look up t uh, Luke 12, 11, and 12 then. When conflict occurs, the natural reaction is to blame someone else and defend yourself. But believers must respond differently. Once I was publicly chastised for a wrong I had not committed. Thankfully, the Lord enabled me to remain calm rather than react angrily. 
Praying before doing anything else is the best response in a crisis. When we do, God supernaturally provides that which we can, can't muster up ourselves. He strengthens us. He strengthens us. And you know what? By taking that, that deep breath and just pausing in anything we do, we have the ability to speak God and not the enemy. A quick response, a quick tongue is the enemy. And you need to remember that. And this just makes life so much better because at this point is where you will see that it's the enemy and it's the enemy using that person and not not the person instinct right off the bat you know um, so you give that person grace boy these mosquitoes are after me they love me um, so the next part is spiritual discernment. Oh, that's funny. I was just saying that. Okay, the Lord, who perfectly understands the source of every problem, can give us insight beyond our limited perspective. Perhaps there's been a communication breakdown, a feeling of jealousy on the other person's part, or a mistake we unknowingly made. The Holy Spirit can show us how to approach our accuser and see beyond hurtful words or actions. So my thoughts on this are, are, are like this. If somebody says something to me that hurts me, and I realize because of my intuitiveness with the, the Lord and, the enemy, and, and knowing that the enemy is playing a huge role, that I realize that the enemy just used that person. That person didn't even realize. And you walk away, and you just separate yourself from it, and you pray for them. You know, you, what will often happen is that person will realize what they said and how it hurt and how it felt and, and what they have done, and they will come back and apologize to you. You know, the enemy will use people closest to us all the time to tear us down, to tear us apart, to qu make us question. And, and you know that when there's a Christian in your life that's making you question God, that is the enemy speaking through them, and they need prayer. And it's not that they are, they may be at a weak spot where the enemy is attacking them, and that's how that surfaced. So I know it's convoluted. I know it's, it makes life a little more complicated because you've really got to pay attention. But when you pay attention to that stuff, a lot of that garbage isn't the garbage that it appears right off the bat. It's smoke and mirrors. The enemy uses smoke and mirrors. So, with that being said, um, the next thing is a quiet spirit. Our human nature wants to react quickly so that we can defend ourselves. That's why we must first deliberately focus our attention on the Lord and experience the inward peace that he alone makes available to us. And that is where John 14, 27 comes from. Write that in your journal today. That is, those are powerful, powerful, powerful words. Those are the ones I read earlier, that, that he gives you peace, the kind of peace only he can give. And you know, we gotta live in that peace. We've gotta live in that peace. When everything else in our world is something that's questioned because of our circumstances, you need to live in that peace. So now here comes the wisdom. Jesus told his disciples the Holy Spirit would give them wise words to say when they faced hostile authorities. He'll do the same for you. Ask him to put a seal on your lips until he shows you what to say and when. <laughs> so just envision the lock being closed and the key being pitched. Okay, guys, because we're all guilty of it. We're all guilty of quickly reacting. And, you know, it's just human nature. It's our flesh. But we have the ability to handle it different. And I've been really, really, really focusing on that since I've been become more uh, in tune with how the enemy is working in my life and how he is trying to break me. Because I don't want to hurt the people closest to me. I don't want to break the people closest to me. Um, you know, some people live with the tit for tat. That just drives me nuts. That makes my heart sick. And it, and it hurts me because... I see that happening so much and I don't want, I don't want to live that way. We're called not to live that way. Walking in integrity and walking in God's way means that when someone does something to you, you do turn the other cheek. And yeah, it might be hard, but I refuse to be a tit for tat person. I will not do that. I will not do that. No matter how hurtful something is, I refuse to live in that space. Dawn says, I must need a really, really big lock. <laughs> well, sometimes we do. And you know what? It's when you learn that you need a really, really big lock, then you can keep working on it, and then you will need a smaller lock. You know what? It's, it's all, <laughs> it's just funny. You know what? We all, 
we are all walking this walk. We are all at different levels in this in this journey. And um, it's like I say all the time, if you feel that my walk with God is so incredible and you can't imagine ever being there, please don't. I don't want you to be discouraged by my walk. I want you to be empowered by my walk. I didn't get here overnight. And Dawn, I was in the same place years ago. And you know what? I changed that. I used to curse like a sailor. And I changed that. I didn't want to do that. And I stopped. And 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 now it's kind of funny when, when people curse, you know, and I'm not around because I don't live in it anymore. It kind of makes me turtle, you know, and you try to find a movie that doesn't have it or violent, you know, the violence you're going to have and that we don't mind. But, you know, the sexual and the and the perversion and all that stuff that goes around, you know, we have the choice to decide to step out of that stuff. Anything, anything we do. So, Dawn, it's, it's all good. And, um... Wherever you guys are in your walk, please don't ever be discouraged because I'm at this place. I, I am no hoity-toity Christian. I am where I am because God has brought me here. God has walked me through some amazing trials. And I do say that, I say amazing trials because I've learned so much through those trials. I would never ask, even as awful as they were, I would never ask for them to, to have not experienced them because they have made me who I am. And you know what? Um, as we walk, as we pull closer to God, as we make choices to be more firm in our ways with God's Word, um, we, we, we shift from how we used to be to how we are. And that's okay because God loves us through our sin and, and as a result of our sin. And we need, it, it's our choice to decide to progress in that, in that place. And as you do, you will reach a place like mine and and have that discernment and that intuitiveness of both God and the enemy I the last week I was walking Monday when I was getting pummeled um, I went for a walk and I walked it fast I only had an hour and I made it in an hour and five minutes I walked five miles but I had to stop a couple times to write things down because he was just dumping in my head so when you have that full relationship with God he will share things with you he shares every Wednesday with me. I do not research this. I do not study this. I do not seek it. He gives it to me. He gifts it to me. And that is a blessing when you can be in a place with God that he does share that. I've seen you guys commenting here. I got to read up. Curbing the tongue. Yes, Charles. And, and you know, it's, it's, it's not an easy task. It's not an easy process. I've been all, in all kinds of verbal all out conversations already, you know, neck, veins flaring and not being very nice probably. Um, we all do that. We've all done that. We all go through that. But we grow. We grow in Christ and we progress to different places and we choose to progress to different places. So if you are there, just remember you can change if you want to. Kelly says sometimes me too, but God is working on me. <laughs> like I said, I was there. Shelly says, I am sure you are not that bad. I agree. I too work on not saying things that hurt others. Yeah, and you know, when somebody hurts us, it is our instinct to want to get even or to get back or, or even to, you know, if somebody misjudges us and, and says something that is wrong, I know I'm really quick to want to make it right so that they understand because I do believe that when we walk through life, we, we tend to be very misunderstood. That is part of the enemy also because he wants to make us misunderstood so that people you know, so that people take things hurtfully when we didn't mean them that way. You know, so when, when I see that people are misunderstanding my intentions, I want to react and I want to share with them, but I do hold off and I do wait and I do walk away from situations so that God gives me clarity on how to handle those situations. And sometimes it may not be that I came across wrong. It's just people in the world are so used to being under attacked, under attack and being hurt that they take things the wrong way um, or they are of the world and they're fighters and they like to find a fight in everything. I know that you can raise your hand and give me a thumbs up that you experience people like that. They're, they're out there and we need to learn to not dis to disengage from them and not engage. If anything, well, more than anything, pray for them. So, um, 
Let me see. I don't know if I read all this. We don't have to react to criticism with anger and self-protection the way the world does. Instead, we are called to represent Christ in every situation by depending on him. In responding as he directs, we bring him glory and cause unbelievers to want to know the source of our strength. And it is pretty powerful. Um, and and um, Dawn and anybody else out there, and, and this is inc me included, that, you know, when you've been a person that has been bold um, in, in your speaking or you curse like a sailor or whatever it was that you did and uh, was more of a worldly kind of reaction and then all of a sudden you're different, God, you know, people around you are going to want to know where that came from and, and be like, wow, well, if she can do that, I can do that, or if he can do that, I can do that, or I want what he has. You know, there is, there is an amazing draw to the strength of a warrior, and that is somebody that is walking through some crazy stuff, and that's somebody that is willing to speak God's word and speak of God and not be fearful and to share our testimonies to share our testimonies God, guys I can't tell you enough hi Tim um, I can't tell you enough how important it is for us to share our our celebrations to share our struggles because when we share our struggles too you know I, I hate to be a downer in anybody's world but sometimes you've seen me do it I will share our struggles. We have been very transparent because being transparent allows people to see that through weakness and through the struggles, people do shine and people do have a strength about them that they are willing to share and, and that that strength, as you watch them walk it out, is strengthening. You know, what is that? And we, can, we all have the ability to be a light. We all have the ability to change. And we all have the ability to be who we are. That's one of the biggest things in this is, you know, when the, in the past when I was afraid to speak Jesus' name, when I was afraid to speak God in certain communities and groups of people, you know what? I wasn't being true to myself. And I wasn't being true to Jesus. I go home from those in environments and I feel like I didn't do a justice. I didn't feel like I fit in, for starters. And I didn't feel like I was sharing what I should have shared. And you know what? When you finally get to that point where you are comfortable with who you are, regardless what people think, and you are willing to do the hard, which is, you know, sharing. Sharing that hard stuff. Whether it's a celebration, whether it's a journey you're walking through, but you're not afraid to share it. Um, that's when you touch lives. That's when you change lives. That's when your life starts to mold and change. So we are, we are all of the flesh. We all struggle with these things. We've all, I mean, there isn't one of us here who hasn't struggled with any of what I've talked about today. You know, we sin. It's just the nature of our flesh. Um, I am no better than any of you. You are no better than me. And, and when we realize that and we just love on each other and love on one another, it makes the world such an amazing place. You know, and when you learn to see the enemy walking in other people and you learn to pray for them and watch them transform, it's pretty powerful stuff. It's pretty powerful stuff. So, this was awesome. God is good. God is good. God is good. He gave me all of this. You guys all were led to share. And so powerful. If you are gaining from these Wednesday events, please, please, please share them with your friends. Um, so powerful. We can reach so many people. And I love that these are being shared and watched on YouTube. And it's just powerful. Also, if you want to join our everyday community, you can go to treyerwilderness.com slash community. Uh, we are attempting to grow a like community there um, where you don't have to wait till Wednesday. You can come and share. You can come and ask for prayer. And I didn't talk about that today, but there's a prayer list below. There is also um, links to what I use to stay organized on the homestead and to keep things rolling here and to create new habits. There are also links below for what I've been doing to heal. I am healed. Praise God, I am healed. By the grace of God, I am healed. And I give him all the glory. 
It is just an amazing journey. I am feeling myself getting stronger in it. I am feeling the effects of it. I am being able to use my left hand that has 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 had no purpose on this planet up until now. Um, it's starting to get coordinated into things, um, and and so are all of my other efforts. So God is good. Give Him the glory, and um, just always remember to praise Him every day, and just. Pay attention to the things that he is blessing you with. Have your gratitude journal. Write three things down. I gave you guys homework last week. What were your words? What were the words that you are no longer going to use? I told you last week, mine is sorry. And also, um, I don't care, which popped up. And I did figure out this week where that came from. And it wasn't necessarily vulgar. But anytime I asked the mountain man, what do you want to eat? What do you, do you, what do you want to watch tonight? What do you, I don't care. That's where that came from. And now I caught myself, I told you, I caught myself saying that since I started on this healing process. The other thing is sorry, that does not mean that I will not apologize to somebody, but because of my upbringing and, and being, it, it being ingrained in me that I was worth nothing and that I couldn't do anything right, I have found over my years that I use the word sorry and I apologize for everything. Things that I shouldn't apologize for. I am who I am. I shouldn't apologize for that. So I'm not using the word sorry anymore, but I will use the word I apologize when it's necessary. So if you guys were not joining last week, if you find that you are saying destructive words in your head or to yourself out loud, you need to pick two of them and stop using them. Can't, whatever, and sorry. <laughs> yep, see, they're there. Even the most positive people, they're there. And we're saying them in the back of our heads. And at the forefront of things oftentimes too. So, Diana says, whatever is mine. I'm sure there are more I need to get rid of. Just pay attention to it. Last week I got rid of two. I did say, um, uh, I don't care several times and verbally told myself to stop it. Um, we can change those things. Those are things we can change too. So, I'm going to say a prayer for us. Dear Jesus, Papa, I just thank you for this time. How powerful, how amazing you have spoken through each of these people. You've blessed each of these people. You've blessed me. And I just ask that you continue to keep your arms strongly wrapped around each and every one of these wonderful, loving friends. And I want you to just give them peace in their day-to-day -day walk. Keep them conscious of the enemy's attacks. Help them to be more discerning when he's stepping in, when he's trying to interfere. As soon as things go from being good to being awry or different, you can be sure that he's found a weak spot and he's going to enter. So just keep them strong, keep them more alert and discerning, and um, help them to be intuitive to his attacks. Also help them learn to celebrate the struggles because those struggles come because the enemy is trying to stop them from what they're doing and just uh, help them learn to pull into you during those times and to seek you for guidance and love and your mercies. And I just ask that you be with Martin and Kim and the family and I know you are working that miracle. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. You are working that miracle. I also ask that you please be with Justin and Heather as they process the different emotions that they have through their experience of loss. And, you know, help them to show each other grace, their, their, themselves grace, more than anything. Because going through those experiences and going through those emotions and... Just walking that out is a really hard thing. Let them be blessed by the Christian community's love for them, and may they be blessed in everything they do moving forward. And I ask that you be with all those on our prayer list. Our prayer list is long, and that is a blessed thing that we have the opportunity and the gift to pray for all of those people. Be with them. Be with each and every one of these beautiful strong-hearted and loving people that are in my community, in our community, and just love on them and, and give them a peace like no other today. Help them through their walks. I know many of them are struggling right now because the enemy is just trying to get in. Make him go back where he belongs and help them to be able to discern and learn to tell him to go where he belongs. And just thank you for what you've shared with us today. Such powerful, powerful words on a way to live our lives. Pulling into other Christians and being able to walk upright 
and to choose integrity over the world, to choose you over the world, and to just uh, be more conscious and, and desire a stronger walk with you, a more upright walk with you. And just help us in that journey because we're all going to fail. We're all going to make mistakes every day. Every day we're going to make mistakes. And just, just give ourselves grace for those moments. Learn from those moments. Don't be discouraged by them. Realize that you did it and then move on. Don't be stuck in that place because that's what the enemy wants. So thank you, Papa, for all you do. Thank you more so for what you're going to do in each and every one of our lives. And thank you for your strength in our day-to-day -day walk. We ask this in your holy and precious name of Jesus. Amen. Okay. <laughs> Dawn, okay, I just realized what you were saying. Um, that is fantastic. Yes, that you guys are realizing your words and, and learning that, those words, those words that cause us to falter. Those are the enemy's words. That, notice, they're all negative. They're negative words from the enemy trying to slip us up, skip us up, and cause us to fail cause us to sin. And you know, I know so many uh, uh, people that when they do make that mistake and they do sin throughout their day that they get stuck in that place because they are they are not being kind to themselves. They are not forgiving themselves for making that mistake. And that is where we need to give ourselves grace and forgive ourselves and realize that our flesh is going to cause us to sin, but being intuitive and and discerning it and seeing it right off the bat and shifting and repairing it and moving forward. You, you got to give yourself grace. That's power. That's strength in God. That's learning. That's growth. That's maturity in your walk with God. So don't be stuck there. Be strong in that spot. Oh, Gosh, this was so awesome today. I am just so excited. Brian says, oh, when you realize that all things, it's shifting on me, H hang on a minute. When you realize that all things were created by the power God put into the spoken word, you also realize how powerful, both creative or destructive power, the words are that we speak. If you are in a positive in, in a position of authority, a parent, a pastor, judge, teacher, uncle, the words spoken are even more creative or destructive powerful yes very very true very very true and um oh happy birthday tammy richards should we sing happy birthday happy birthday to you i'm not going to do it all because i uh, have no tune but happy birthday that's awesome i didn't know today was your birthday shame on me um but how awesome and thank you for saying so kelly so we can all wish her a happy birthday and and guys that, and Brian, those are very, very powerful words, and that is so true. You know, we have the ability to build or to break. Our words are powerful. Our words are more powerful. I tell you this because I've experienced both. Words are more powerful than a fist. Words stick. The scar and the bruise goes away, but words don't. Words seep in and stick in crevices deep down. And our words can be so destructive. So remember that. And remember, you know, to apologize to somebody is a hard thing because it means we need to humble ourselves. But it's amazing how powerful the words I am sorry or I apologize are. They create an opening for healing for those words to re be removed from those crevices and those cracks and to keep them from going deep. So don't be prideful when you know you've made a mistake and those words may have hurt somebody be willing to apologize because I'm telling you I really truly believe that the words are more powerful than a fist um, I realize as I'm growing up and I'm experiencing and re-experiencing some of the things or rehashing some of the things I've experienced in life that the things that stuck the most were the words so I'm gonna leave you with that um, Carrying the message by being transparent. Yes. Yeah, you know, being transparent is huge. If we can be transparent with one another um, and be, and that's being who we are, being real and not being afraid to share the, the, the sensitive stuff, the real stuff, you know, that really um, 
I think is a way to reach people so much more than if we just share pieces of ourselves. So anyway, you guys, what a gorgeous day and what an amazing time and what beautiful people you all are. I am so blessed by this today and I am so awed always at what God does and what he's going to do is going to be more powerful. You know, we need to thank him more for what he's going to do ahead because that means that we're trusting and believing in his abilities. So remember that, guys. I love you all. God bless you too, sweet woman. I love you, Tammy. Happy birthday and love you all. Have a great week. Oh, Brian just said yes. And please forgive me is powerful and opens doors to healed relationships. Yes. Oh yes, and I'm really glad that that got in here before I jumped off. Yes, um, it does open a lot of healing. It keeps relationships alive. It um, does a lot. It does a lot, but I find that the, the times it's not shared is a prideful um, notion on the offender or even you know our part in not being willing to just say those simple words and those simple words are so freeing I mean I know the release I get just from hearing them so yes very true and Brian thank you for sharing and guys thank you all for being willing to be transparent and share on here because it it is making this so much more incredible um, to see how this community is strengthening, growing, and what God is doing in it. So, oh my gosh, it's so awesome. So awesome. So thank you guys. Have a blessed rest of your week. If you'd like, join me over in the community, treyerwilderness.com slash community. And I look forward to seeing you guys next Wednesday. God bless.